Hello, and welcome to our Bible study today. My name is David Matthews. I'm very glad that you're able to join us. Today, we're starting a new series looking at the book of Ephesians. We're running it concurrently with our Bible study, with our Bible series entitled Encountering Christ, which you can find on our YouTube channel. Our first series, our first sermon was entitled, Who Am I? And we're looking at the topic of identity. In our Bible study, we are going to be looking at this topic or this uh, idea of identity, specifically looking at who does God say that I am. And to do that, we're going to be looking at chapter 1, beginning at verse 3, going through to verse 14. Today I'm reading from the uh, New International Version. Uh, you're welcome to use whatever Bible you have available to you to, to follow along. I'm using uh, this version specifically because of its ease of reading. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who are first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. What did you hear? What did you hear in this reading of God's word to you, God's declaration of who you are? I'm going to read section by section here, piece by piece, and try and highlight a few things of who God says you are. So again, the reading starts, Praise, to, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So immediately we recognize that the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is God of all, and that he has blessed us, that we are blessed in the heavenly realms. We are blessed in the court of God. We are blessed with what? One or two things? No. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ meaning that the things of God, uh, the things that God has, has given and marked Jesus Christ with, that they are ours, that we have somehow received these things as well. We are marked by these same blessings. Verse 4 goes on to say, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. So we were chosen. We were created with the purpose to be holy and blameless. We are created with the idea and intention for that to be who we are. Holy and blameless in whose sight? Somebody who has fallen and somebody who is depraved? Because a depraved person might think somebody slightly less depraved than them is holy and blameless. No. You and I are thought and, and created with the purpose of being holy and blameless in the sight of God himself, in the sight of the one who truly is holy and blameless, perfect. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. I just want to stop right there because this, this scripture uses the word predestined, and some people get hung up on it. What the word predestined really means, to break it down, is pre, meaning before, destined, created for, or designed for. So your, in other words, your pre-design, your uh, blueprints, 
you're the very inception of the idea of who you are. In love, he had this inception of you. You are created, in other words, out of love to be adopted. That's why you were designed. You weren't designed or made for the purpose of being an example of failure, but rather to be an example of love. And this is all through Jesus Christ. You're going to be adopted through his actions, through what he's done. We are all adopted into him in accordance with his pleasure and will. Meaning, again, you were created for pleasure and will. God takes pleasure in you. God's will is, is for you to bring him pleasure as he looks at you and rejoices in you. Part of your identity is that you bring pleasure to God. Have you ever thought about that? That you bring a smile to God's face. It's part of who you are. And all this is to the praise of his grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Verse 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. So according to verse 7 here, we have redemption through his blood. We are redeemed. Redeemed of what? Redeemed of the times that we have fallen short, the ways in which we have broken covenant and relationship with God, the times and the ways in which we're not worthy to be called his children. We're redeemed that we are. And we are forgiven of our sins. God remembers them no more. They are cast away from us and we are holy in his sight. And all of this is according to God's grace that he's lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Lavished. I want to highlight this word. God didn't give forgiveness or, or redemption sparingly. He didn't, you know, with, like, with, a, with a knife with butter on it, carefully get to the edges, but, you know, didn't want to put too much on. No. Like with a jug of oil, God just upturned it and just keeps dousing and dousing and dousing. God has poured more and more upon. But similarly, he's done so with all wisdom and grace. Not done so in such a way as to miss pieces or parts, but has covered us entirely and thoroughly. We are truly covered in redemption and in forgiveness. Verse 9 says, And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure. In other words, we are brought in on the knowledge of God. We are brought in into the wisdom of understanding of God. We're not a child that is, is hidden in a corner that's part of the family but not really you know, associated with or talked to. But rather, we are part of the inner circle of the family. Verse 11 says, In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Again, emphasizing this idea that this is your design. This was the original idea of you. Your redemption and your adoption into God's family was not some afterthought. God didn't get his plan A, so he settled on his plan Z, which is you. No. You are God's plan A. You as part of his family is his original idea of you. Verse 12 says, In order that we who are first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. I just want to emphasize this. Like that idea of a family member who the family is a little bit embarrassed of. That's not God's family. That's not how you relate to God. That you who are first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. In other words, God is proud of you. 
whatever your sins, whatever he has redeemed you of, whatever he is working on you, in, in you regarding, that God is proud of you. That as God stands in his heavenly throne with surrounded by angels, you're not shunted off into the side, but rather God draws you close and has you stand beside him. That as people look up to God and see his glory, you're not some black mark on him. Rather, you are part of what is shining in front of all. God holds you close and says, See, this is who I am. And he's holding you there with him. You are part of God's glory. Verse 13, And you were also included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation. How much praise does Jesus deserve for what he endured? How much glory has he been given for what he went through? Well, according to this, you were included in Christ. In other words, in what Jesus is to receive, you are to be there also. You are to be part of that and to receive that too. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. In other words, all these things, they are furthermore marked and assured by the signing on the dotted line, the, the marking of the contract, the assurance of all that God has said will be done is by his Holy Spirit in your life. God has marked you, has sealed you. He has given you his last name. All that, is, that it is assured by heaven and earth that you are his, that you are part of his family. And that this redemption that was begun in you will be completed. You might look at your life right now and say, David, I don't seem, I don't, I don't feel very redeemed. I don't seem to be very forgiven. Well, the Holy Spirit that came into you when you first knelt down, when you first said, God, I believe, come into my life. I am yours. When you said that, when you accepted the forgiveness of your sins in Jesus Christ, you are marked by the Holy Spirit. And when that happens, God is saying that what I am starting today in you, I will complete. Here is my spirit, that you know it's true. Here is my name. The same word for spirit is the same word for breath. It is God's life in you. He is coming to collect you, coming to draw you to be with him. So again, looking at this chapter one, who does God say that you are? God says you are blessed. God says that you are chosen. God says that you are adopted. God says that according to his glorious grace, he loves you. God says that you are redeemed. God says that you are forgiven. God says that according to his good pleasure, that he will bring you to be with him. God says that you are chosen. God says that according to his plan, that you are to be with him. God says that you are part of his glory. God says that you are included with Christ. And this is the gospel of salvation. And lastly, God says that you are marked by his spirit as his own. You are called by his name, by who he is. So as always, I hope that you continue to read the scripture for yourself understanding this revelation that God has given us as to who he is and to who, who, as who we are. 
God's word is there for us to open, for us to explore, and for us to know. So God bless you this day. I hope that this opens your eyes in your relationship to who he is and who he sees you as, for you are loved. God bless.